I'm thankful and grateful for every single part of the journey, even the struggles. I enjoy it. Yeah. You you were just talking a minute ago about about connecting with people emotionally and things yeah. like that. So that that leads into one of the other topics. Uh, a chance for you to speak on the ideas of uh, American Pie, global influence, and universal connection. Yeah, yeah. You know, of those three, what you can speak on all three. If one comes <laughs> out to you, you can speak on. On, on connecting with people. Oh uh, yeah. Well, America. We got American Pie. We got global influence. <laughs> then we got a yeah. universal connection. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I believe all three things are intertwined. You know. And I'm going to get a little philosoph philosophical here, but I, I really believe that us humans were were created to to uh, to connect with one another. I don't believe we can survive if we're in this cocoon. You know, being being uh, being an individual is one thing, and being unique is one thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of people mistake that for being by themselves and and I, I probably enjoy being alone more than the average person. <laughs> like, I love just being by myself. But let's be honest, man, we need one another. We need to connect with each other. You can't survive by yourself. We're pe we are people of, uh, I believe that we are people of, of rhythm and people of togetherness and unity. We have to connect. We don't have to agree on everything. Don't, un don't misunderstand what I'm saying. You can have your opinion. That is, that's wonderful. But that doesn't mean that... Let's okay. You have an opinion. I have an opinion. Let's sit down and talk about it. I want to know what you're about. You know what I mean? Tell me what you're about. What you believe in, and I will tell you what I believe in. Let's talk and let's connect. I, I love just sitting down with people and just having a conversation. Just talking about life, man. I don't need to be at a party and 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 doing all that. I, I would much rather just sit down with somebody that's on the same level. We can just connect, and you can feel it when you connect. It's like when you listen to uh, really two singers and you know when their voice harmonizes and you can just hear that ring. I feel that on a mental level with some people and I love it. It, 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 it's, uh, it, it it's like a high for me, you know. And I try to do that with my art. You know, not, not everybody can connect to my music, to what I talk about because not everybody lived the lifestyle that I live. Not everybody is an immigrant. Not everybody has lived in different parts of the world. But, uh, but those that, that did, I know they can connect with me and I try to tell their story because a lot of times they uh, unfortunately may not have the platform to do that for themselves. And so I also have that part and I have the part of being American, you know, and I can speak on that and connect with people here. So it's, it's a blessing for me to, you know, just the lifestyle that I've had, you know, a lot of people may, may wish that may not wish to have that lifestyle of being torn from their family and having to move here and start a new life or whatever, but I'm, it's a blessing for me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of uh, every part of it. As a, as a Sudanese immigrant, how old were you when you came? I came from Egypt, actually. I was uh, nine years old. And with that, what are your thoughts on the idea of American Pie or, or Milk and Honey? You know... Um, being in America, and, and I'm speaking as an American as well, because you know I'm, I am a Amer Sudanese American. Uh, it has its benefits, obviously. There are more opportunities, I would say, but at the same time, um, it's a different culture. It's a very different culture. Uh, American culture really stresses. Uh, individualism and it, 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 it pushes the idea of of being alone and uh, the Sudanese part of me is really family oriented is really uh, being about it's about the community it's about being together maybe that's just the African in me you know and so uh, it's kind of having to find and bridging those two is kind of difficult sometimes because at home you know I'm, I'm with Sudanese people you know I'm with African people I'm hanging out with African people but when I'm out working, when I'm traveling, when I'm doing this and that, you have to adjust. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, you gotta learn to adjust. Depends on who you're with. So, it, it can be difficult sometimes. The dynamics of being the star of an artist, or what? or being an artist in general. Yeah. You know, 
uh, versus the business side. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got the starving artist cliche yeah, thing yeah. that everybody talks about. And yeah. then you got the business aspect and you understanding that you know that you gotta conduct business behind your craft oh, yeah. to sustain yeah. yourself. So what are your thoughts on, on that dichotomy? Well, I believe that in uh, when you first start, you have to invest in yourself, obviously. And a lot of artists coming up don't understand that. They're like, well, they want to get paid right away. And uh, you have to learn that you have to pay for your own self. You, you have to pay sometimes for your ticket. You have to pay for this. You have to pay for that because if nobody knows your name yet, whatever company, whoever is, whatever host or DJ, a lot of times they're not going to be willing to invest in you if they don't know what you're about. And that could be a door opening opportunity for you that you're missing out by thinking that you're at a place that you're not yet. And then it's not about your art. You can be the the next, you know, Michael Jordan of music, you know, per se, but you gotta know where you are on a level of, uh, of uh, you know, popularity or whatever you wanna call it. And in the beginning, I, I paid, man, I paid my own, I worked a job at J-O-B, saved some money while I was writing music and I paid my plane ticket to go overseas round trip, you know, and that was expensive for me at the time. I was 18, 19 or something. And I paid my own way plane ticket to go and that opened huge doors for me. So if I was hard headed at the time and I was like, man, nah, they need to pay my ticket. They need to pay me in this. I, I wouldn't have been where I'm at now, you know. But you also get to a position that you got to realize, know your worth. And you can't let people take, uh, take advantage of you because... You got to eat, <laughs> you know, you got to eat. And, uh, you know, we do make music for the passion of it, but we also want to get paid. And a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people just want to, you know, get your music for free and they want you to do shows for free and everything like that. And it's, it's cool depending on the situation, but in the long run, man, if you don't eat, you can only be making this for so long, you know, you got to eat. I want to eat. <laughs> yeah. What are your final thoughts? The, the concept of chasers uh, represent everything you represent, being a, a lyricist, a musician. Yeah. You know, what are your final thoughts? What do you have to say? You know, I believe that as an artist that, um, and I said that I don't really like talking about myself, you know, but once you start getting someone that will follow you. I, I believe that you have to use that your platform to speak on social injustices as much as you can because I believe that is a duty, you know, and a lot of people may see me wearing this shirt, you know, with the Nubian flag and talking about the issues going on in Sudan and around the world and whatnot and, you know, to my, surprisingly, a lot of people get angry with me for doing that. People back home going through that struggle get angry with me. You know, I had a guy the other day on Facebook, he was like, Oh, you know, you're in America, you know, you're, you're, you're relaxing, you're having fun, and we're over here struggling. Yeah, of course you can sit behind the computer and, and talk about this. And uh, it's understandable why he's saying that. I completely understand where he's coming from. But a lot of people that say that, they're just negative people because if I didn't speak out, they would go right on there and say, look at Rami, he's not speaking out, he's relaxed in America. And if I do speak out, you know, you get what I'm saying? So they always find something negative to say. But, man, I had more people show me love than, than show me hate. And that's what it's all about. You know, that's a win right there for me. That's a W. So as an artist, shame on you if you're, not, if you're not using your platform and speak on social injustices. Because at the end of the day, it's the people that make you who you are. You understand what I'm saying? It's the people that put you on that platform. If it wasn't for those people going on YouTube, watching your videos, liking your Facebook page, retweeting you, you wouldn't be nothing. You wouldn't be that where you're at now. So you need to appreciate that and give back to those people and show them love because people are struggling out here and you are a part of the people. And that struggle is going to come back and bite you if you, don't, if you don't speak about it now. Don't think that you're immune to it, you know, just because you got a little bit of money and fame. A lot of people will get, uh, you know, they, they, they get... They don't understand that, and so, despite what anybody says, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep talking about what's going on because this right here is my identity, you know, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget where I come from because it's not about it's not about where you're born or where you live, man. It's about what lives inside of you, and and you know, the Nile River, man, that's running through my veins, you know, and uh, 
yeah, you, you got to speak about it. And I'm going to keep representing it till, till the day I die, man. It's an idea. Once I'm gone physically, that's fine, but I know my ideas are going to live on. I want to give a shout out to Matt Diamond Photography, Imagery, Matt Diamond as a person. You know, uh, I just I just started working with him recently, but this guy, man, he's definitely one of the, uh, one of the, he's got the right mind. You know, he's one of the people that I feel like I connected with right away in the Kansas City area and, and anywhere. You know, so definitely uh, be in touch with Matt Diamond for, for your photography needs, for your videos, for, for anything artistically. He's the man to go to in the Midwest for sure. This has been Rami Dawood with Matt Diamond Chasers. Uh, you can follow me on, on Twitter uh, my, at Rami Dawood, R-A-M-E-Y-D-A-W-O-U-D. My Instagram is Rami Dawood. And I have an album coming out called Kashta, coming out in May. Be sure to uh, follow me on all my social networks so you can uh, keep up to date on what's going on with that. And, uh, much love the and one you're not in the imam and the pastor man came to the conclusion that priceless is the cost of man. Cross me wrong and I'll make you dread it like a roster man. In the start they smile, but later on they show us. The more it turns into a frown, the more they get to know us. The more they get to know us, the more they get is lower. The more we slower, the more room we have to move forward. Now they love us. Look me dead in the eye. I dare you, bunch of suckers. They turn away.